Hello, everyone. I'm Renee Hauser, and I have my good friend and colleague Pam Kutrakos with me, who is the author of Word Study That Sticks. And if you are a teacher that I've studied with over the last couple of years, you have absolutely seen me recommend this. I'm really excited today to talk to you a little bit about a handful of strategies that are screen free techniques to help students in your life get curious about words. So whether you're a caregiver and supporting at-home learning or a teacher thinking through brick and mortar, a hybrid scenario, or remote learning, we have a few goodies for you today. <laughs> Pam, do you wanna start us off and talk a little bit about what you've been thinking about in terms of screen-free, getting kids curious about words? Absolutely. We know that in general, we probably all spend a little bit too much time on screens in typical times. And right now, um, a lot of what we're doing has moved to virtual platforms. Even communication with those we love has been more virtual than typical. Um, so I really just think about how we can reconnect um, even within our houses and the people that we're comfortable seeing in our circles right now and explore words and get curious about words and just bring greater word awareness to what we're doing in ways that involve um, what we have handy around the house or even just our voices, right? So we don't need any fancy supplies or materials, but different ways that we can really nurture um, a curious mindset and disposition for learning about words without having to have any technology. And sometimes those simple practices really amplify the excitement um, and get kids a little bit more invested. I'm going to share one tool that I've been using in my own life with my five-year-old, but also talking to friends uh, who have kids at home and thinking about um, giving yourself permission, this idea that you don't have to become the writing teacher, but our job is to exactly what you're saying, Pam, kind of foster that curiosity in writing. So spelling is one thing that comes up a ton. Um, do I give them the word? Um, do I correct their spelling? Um, yep, it's an absolute, it, it was the roadblock for me as a kid, right? I never saw myself as a writer because I, my spelling um, had a lot of room for support. The act of writing is an interesting one. It goes from like the idea in your mind, imagining the idea to the process of kind of getting your hand literally to print the words on the page and remembering all of that. There's so many functions of the brain that are involved in writing. And so to keep that curiosity vivid and engage with kids wanting to write about stories from their life or um, um, things that they are experts on, they can teach us about. A word, a personal word wall is a really simple tool that I thought I would share. And then Pam's gonna share some too. So all I did was take a three by five, or no, this is not a three by five. This is just like a folder that I had you know, in my office. And I just wrote all the letters of the alphabet on it. And then I actually did color code these. Sess is in uh, pink and goalie. So the nouns were in pink and then jump and kick, like the verbs were in yellow. And this is really like, you know, durable. She can take this with her. My daughter is just learned, my, my daughter is actually just learning kind of print. Um, but it's also fun that she could take these little, I put them on stickies. So she mm -hmm. could take the stickies off. And if she's working on a, on a drawing, she could label her word princess. Um, so that her mind is freed up to tell the story versus um, so much of her thinking about the letters and the sounds. She's just starting to figure out that alphabetic principle, right? That these little squiggly things have names and sounds. So this is kind of um, a personal word wall, I think is a, is a fun and easy tool to co-create with young emergent writers in your life or even not so young, right? Could be a fun tool to create that screen free that can get kids curious about words and using words in what they're drawing or what they're building or what they're writing about. So Renee, very quickly before I share an idea too, I just wanna say a couple of things that I especially appreciate about the word wall. Um, many of us are gonna have a file folder or a piece of copy paper and something to write with at home. So these are not that anyone needs to go purchase anything. And then second, the words that are included are words that are personal for this child and our words that they're likely to want to use that might make them even perhaps a little bit more excited to sit down and do some writing because they're important words to them and they reflect their interests and passions. Um, in addition to that, 
some of them, because they're so movable and transportable, are just going to help kids stay in the moment with like reflecting their ideas in paper instead of getting so caught up. Um, in a similar note, when I'm thinking not necessarily about a tool, but a practice can, that can help our early learners um, that are really trying to solidify the way that words work and sounds work, um, whether they're at that phonics kind of matching state yet or not, is just some oral wordplay that we can do at home. When we're at home and we're playing with words, we often don't need any materials. Um, so we might be looking out a window on a rainy day and play I spy and see what we see outside our window. And then when the kids name what they see or we name what we see, we can just do some simple things. So for instance, if we saw um, the word tree, we could start rhyming with tree. So if we point and we eye spy and see a tree, then we might say bee, flea, right? And we're just doing some rhyming words. We also might begin to think about like tree, um, how many sounds do I hear in tree, right? And then begin to like break up those sounds and we can clap them, we can snap them, we can tap them, we can stamp them, we can do all kinds of things that don't require any special materials. Um, you know, even if you wanted to amplify the fun of the initial I spy, if you're outside, you can do it as a riddle to build in some vocabulary as well. Um, so you can say something like, I see something that has three sounds. I see something that starts with a blend. I see something that's green and grows really tall. Who am I? And then they can say tree, and then they can become creators of riddles as well. And these riddles can do with what the word looks like, what the word sounds like, and or what the word means. Um, I think about this in other ways, just being playful with syllables, right? So if you use a pretty fancy word in your conversation, you could just kind of take up the, some time and clap out those syllables. It's fun. Things will create tongue twisters, right? The kids love creating silly tongue twisters that often don't make sense. Um, sometimes it gives them a chance to bring out their humor that we don't always actively support, but it gets them involved and laughing and playing with words. When I think about as kids get a little bit older, it can be as simple as if you are throwing a ball back and forth playing catch in the backyard, you can be spelling words or naming rhyming words as you're doing that. If you're shooting baskets, same thing. You are driving to pick up a sibling from somewhere and you're sitting in a car or you're walking there to go pick them up. You can simply sometimes play some games where you think of a word and I'll give you a tip, usually an adjective, an adverb, or a verb would work best. And think about as many words you can with similar meanings. Essentially naming lots and lots and lots of synonyms for the word. Or on the flip side, thinking of lots and lots and lots of words with different meanings. Um, so again, just these oral sort of in the moment things that don't require prep, that can help um, sustain some thoughts about words across our day. I'm imagining when we cultivate this curiosity around students um, or with children in our lives, it's this, it feels like we're becoming a coach rather than a corrector or a critic, right? Coaching curiosity and involving um, one another, like this collaboration of co-designing play around getting curious of words and imagining when that happens frequently we're we're just um designing a habit that is joyful and fun um, and engaging and i imagine that kids will want to return to it over and over again in an area sometimes that you know i think really early on we um categorize ourselves we either can or can't spell right we either do or don't know words and what would happen if we shifted that what would happen if we created this curiosity where yeah we're curious about words i i might not know how to spell that word yet but I'm curious, right? And I, and I love to figure things out. And so I have the tools that I need um, to figure out what that word means or how to spell that word or how to understand it in my reading. So it feels like there's this nice reciprocity or even a triangle, right? Like my reading and my writing, but also my relationships that we're kind of fostering in these screen-free activities. You know, a lot of educators do this naturally during transition times at school, brain breaks at school, just tiny ways to infuse this type of work. And I think it's exactly what you said. At home, caregivers can do the same things, have these joyful, light 
um, validating experiences that can feel co-created for tiny snippets so that it never feels like a chore or something you have to do. Um, and the great thing that we can remind people at home too is that there's research that backs this up. When it comes to this type of wordplay, the more that we talk about words and focus on those sounds and different meanings of words, the more that does translate to the kids reading and writing. And in addition to that, the research also tells us that tiny snippets done consistently is way more effective than a big block of time done every so often. And for many of us, we don't have a big block of time always to be able to provide. So to know that we can do something in 30 seconds and we're supporting someone we care about, that feels really great. Um, and it feels a little bit more accessible. We don't need anything special. Um, we could do it anytime, any place, and kind of with anything. There's such flexibility to it that it does give that inherently light and authentic in the moment feeling to these types of really meaningful research-backed practices. Amazing. All right. So let's, um, let's keep it light. Let's get curious. Let's play. We can do this. Let us know um, in the comments if you've tried a couple of these experiences with children in your life and if you have additional ideas. Also check out the podcast that Pam and I just recorded on Read, Write, Think with and Listen with Renee. And we can't wait to hear how it goes. Have fun. Bye. Happy word exploring. Happy word exploring. <laughs>